Hi, in this lecture, I'll show you how to use the DC motor that is going to be part of this Arduino car alongside the L298 motor controller driver. You can see in this frame here from lecture 900B of Arduino step-by-step -step getting serious, I've got the L298N motor controller board and a single DC motor. Eventually in the car experiments, uh, we'll be connecting two of those DC motors to the controller so that each one can drive a wheel. But to keep things simple, and as we are going through an introduction to DC motors, I wanted to simplify the experiments that I'm about to show you and just have a single DC motor. And everything you'll see is exactly as you see it, duplicated to the second DC motor. More about that in a moment. So if you want to learn more about DC motors in general, not just alongside the L298 driver, but there's a few other drivers that are popular in the Makersphere, then you can have a look at section 16 of Arduino Step-by-Step -step Getting Serious, and uh, there's, there's more content here that you can have a look at. Now in terms of the sketch that I'll show you a little bit later in this lecture, the original sketch comes out of Arduino Step-by-Step -step Getting Serious, and you can access it here on the GitHub repository. And I'll be showing you a simplified version of this sketch. This sketch, I've originally set it up for two motors, but I've deleted some of its uh, instructions to make it simpler to learn from and to deal with a single motor as well. There is more documentation that you can find on the SunFound documentation site. And in particular, I will be using this table here in the practical exercise and experiment that I'll show you in a moment. So you can refer to this if you want more information. And of course, it's always a good idea to take a look at the data sheet of any module that we, you might be using. And uh, the information that is included here actually comes straight from the data sheet for this particular module. Uh, so you can see it right here. So this is a configuration of in one, in two, in three, and in four. And basically what is the effect on the DC motor depending on what configuration of either ground or five volt power you apply to those two inputs. Don't worry too much about this now. This is all going to make sense when we actually work on the experiment in uh, just about a minute from now. All right. So uh, the first thing that we'll do is to not worry about any sketches. So we can totally disignore this. I'm not going to run a sketch on the Arduino. However, I am going to use the Arduino as a power source for the motor driver. And I am simply going to use jumper wires to power up the DC motor, stop it, start it, and then also control its direction. And I'll be referring to this table here to know how to apply power to the motor controller in order to cause a particular reaction from the DC motor. So here is the hardware that we'll be using. This is the hardware. It contains a central integrated circuit up here on the top. You can see it's got a very large heat sink on it to help with heat dissipation because this component can get hot. So that's what this is all about here. There's a couple of capacitors on it as well and a voltage regulator. Now there's uh, four uh, screw terminals, uh, pins on either side. So this is out one, out two, out three and out four. And this is where you connect your DC motors. In this experiment that I'm about to show you, we'll be using out one and out two for our DC motor. And notice that there's no indication of which wire on the motor you should plug into which output. Just plug them into any way that you want because the motor itself is not polarized. So it doesn't really matter how you plug it in. There's another screw terminal down the bottom with three pins. There's 12 volts ground and five volts. We'll be connecting the Arduino ground to the middle pin and then the Arduino five volt output pin to the 12 volt pin. This is where our motors will be grabbing power from. So just be careful here. I've seen that happening a lot. 
do not connect the five volts from the motor controller to the five volt on the Arduino because this is actually an output where you want to connect the five volts from the Arduino in order to power the module and its motors is to the 12 volt terminal. The 12 volt label here indicates that this motor controller can receive up to 12 volts of voltage input. Uh, the Arduino from its 5 volt output pin provides regulated 5 volt output and that will be sufficient to drive the 5 volt DC motor that we'll be using. So this is just a label, it doesn't mean that you need to plug in 12 volts in here just because the label says 12 volts. Now here there is the enable pin and you can see there's a jumper here that permanently drives this pin to high. That means that our motors are always going to be enabled as long as the enable pin is connected to high and we achieve that with this jumper. And then finally we've got the in one and in two pins. These two pins allow us to control the speed and direction of rotation of the DC motor. And in the first simple example that does not use a sketch, we'll simply be connecting these two pins to either ground or five volts, and then we'll be observing the reaction of the DC motor. Now you can also apply PWM signals to these pins. So by applying PWM signals on one of the two inputs, either one is okay, you will be able to control the speed of the motor and then you'll be able to control the direction of the motor by manipulating the voltage on the second input. For this experiment, we'll leave in three and in four unconnected. Okay, let's continue at my workbench and have a look at the first experiment. So I've already made the connections here. I've done the wiring to save us a little bit of time. So I'm gonna go through the wiring first and then go ahead with our experiment. Now for power, in with that, I'm using my nine volt battery. I have not connected the Arduino to my computer and the Arduino is running a sketch on it, but I'm not going to be connecting any of the L298 motor drivers pins to any of the Arduino output pins. I'm just going to take power out of the Arduino and that's about it. So I'm going to connect the 9 volt battery to the Arduino through its uh, battle connector here, like that. All right, next I've got the motor driver itself. As you can see, I have made the connections first to the DC motor itself. Now don't worry about how you connect the DC motor wires to the motor driver. It does really matter whether the black wire goes to out two or out one or vice versa. Just connect them in any way that you like. Now moving up to the top side, we've got the 12 volt, which I'm using as power input. And you can see that that is connected to the red rail on my breadboard. The red rail on the breadboard via this red wire I've connected it to the 5 volt pin on the Arduino, like that. For the ground, this is the middle screw terminal that goes to the blue rail on the breadboard and via this black wire, I'm taking the ground level from the Arduino. So in this case, I'm using the breadboard so that I can easily apply ground or five volt level to the in one and in two, since I only have one five volt pin on the Arduino. All right, now I have used a, a yellow and a blue jumper wire to connect in one and in two to at this point ground. So I've got both of the in one and in two inputs of the motor driver connected to the same level. And just going to show you the table of operations that I got from SunFounder. And you can see right here, if in one and in two are zero, zero or one, one, then the motor is not working. Essentially, it's going to stop working and let's call it a break. You can still move the motor, so it's not like it's going to be unstoppable. But uh, yeah, there is 
there's quite a bit of torque here because of the gears inside the, um, the gearbox. So it makes it a bit harder to turn. But if I put in the wheel on and turn it, you see that there's no actual brake in there. It's just there's no power applied to it. Okay. So when I plug in my 9 volt battery to the Arduino, because both in 1 and in 2 are connected to the same rail, in this case it's the blue ground, I could even have plugged both of them onto the 5 volt. They are on the same level, so the motor would not work. But if I switch any of those two wires to its opposite level, then you'll see that I'll have movement. And that's what we'll be experiencing in a moment. All right, that's it. I'm going to apply power to the Arduino. And notice that I've got uh, just a little sticky note here so we can easily see the rotation. So I'm going to take one of those two wires, it doesn't matter which one it is. I'm going to plug the yellow wire, which is in one, to ground. And just by removing it, actually, that's enough. But I'll put it to ground and you can see that the motor is now spinning clockwise. So let's try to get it to spin the opposite way. I'm going to move the blue wire and put it to ground so it's all stopped and then switch the yellow wire to 5 volts. And now the motor is spinning counterclockwise. I can't control the speed yet to control the speed I need to be able to send PWM signals to the motor controller and for that I need to use the Arduino and uh, run a sketch a compatible sketch on it so now that we know how to at least control the direction at full speed each time we are going to continue with the next experiment and upload the motor controller sketch onto the Arduino and I'm going to have to re do a bit of rewiring so that we can you now use PWM signals to control the speed of the motor. So now that you know how to control the direction of spin of the DC motor, depending on the voltage level that you apply to pins in one and in two, we are going to have a look at how you can control the speed. And I mentioned earlier that to control the speed, you need to apply PWM signals. So for that, we're going to use the Arduino, and here is a simple sketch. The original sketch comes from Arduino step-by-step -step getting serious. Uh, looks like this here. There's a bunch of lectures here, and in its original version, this sketch controlled two motors. I've deleted several lines, so where you see speed 2, speed 2, etc., and uh, there's a couple up here. I've deleted those lines. We don't need them for an experiment that only includes a single DC motor. But remember, you can apply the exact same code on a second motor that is connected to output 3 and output 4, and then use in 3 and in 4 in the motor controller to control that second DC motor. All right, so what is happening here in this sketch? First, I set up two pins on the Arduino. One is going to be digital pin 5 and this is what controls the speed and you can use any other uh, digital output pin as long as it's PWM capable and as you can see pin number 5 is PWM capable. For the directional pin you can use any pin on the Arduino. Uh, this pin is just going to switch from 0 to 1 or from high to low and control the speed of rotation. So we also have here a variable that keeps track of the direction, of whether the direction is clockwise or anti-clockwise. And you can see down here that I'm just flipping this uh, Boolean variable to its opposite when I want to switch direction. In setup, I set both pins as outputs. And then inside the loop, first I write the direction that I want to direction 1. Basically, this is pin four, either turn it high or low, and that will control the direction. And then I use analog write on pin five to write a PWM value, and that will set the speed. And then I let the motor run for a second on speed 205, then change the speed 
to 100, let it run for another second, and then 150, let it run for another second, and then switch direction, and then write zero to analog write, which essentially will stop the rotation. And I'm just going to add another delay for one second here so that we can actually notice that the rotation has stopped. All right, so that's all. I'm going to upload the sketch. And I should provide the upload port for the Arduino and try again. Okay. So counterclockwise, you can see the different speeds. And clockwise. There you go. Now that the sketch is uploaded, I can actually disconnect the Arduino from my computer. I can try to do that with a single hand. Just put it down for a second. <laughs> and And as you can see, the rotational speed is controlled via the PWM pin 5, which in this case I have connected to in 1. You can actually switch this around. I will take power off to show you. So I'm going to flip around these two pins. So I'm going to flip or switch in 1 to Arduino pin 4 and then in 2 to Arduino pin 5 and essentially switch which one of the inputs control direction and a speed. And as you'll see when I power up again, the effect on the motor is the exact same. It's just that now the direction and the speed has flipped. meaning that the what signal configuration earlier would cause a clockwise rotation of a particular speed now causes a counterclockwise rotation of the same speed. Okay, let's continue with the infrared sensor in the next lecture.